Have you noticed that it's been raining really hard lately? The other day I was driving, the interstate started flooding. I put on my hazards, I pulled to the side of the road. My daughter was actually in the back seat. I kind of just waited it out. My car didn't stall, but others around me did. And then the other night, again, it was raining incredibly hard, almost horizontally, and I took this video. So I'm sure some of you have had very similar situations. So it begs the question, is it raining harder than it used to? And are downpours becoming more frequent? Why in some spots is it raining harder? And is our property at risk of flooding? In this video, I will answer all those questions and actually give you a tool. You can look at your own home. And I even went online and I tried it myself, put in my home and put in a US landmark and you wouldn't believe the risk for flooding at this place, and I will show you all of that. So if you appreciate this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Record rain and flooding is leaving an unforgettable mark on our lives. From Albany, New York to Albany, Georgia, rain records were shattered in 2023. In July, the Northeast had two months worth of rain in a matter of hours, flooding streets, homes, and businesses. And it's not just anecdotal. These events are actually becoming more extreme in many places. Historically, we have always had these events, but, but they have been, you know, we have been getting more heavy rain and they have been occurring more frequently and have been in many cases more intense in terms of flooding damages. The downpours are making flooding more frequent, and flooding is America's most expensive disaster. For a majority of U.S. residents, two-thirds of their wealth is in their home, and most Americans don't have flood insurance. So just one flood event can wipe out a lifetime of savings. This heavier rain is the result of rising temperatures in a warming world. The warming atmosphere is essentially supercharging the water cycle the process in which water moves through the earth and the atmosphere. Warming temperatures increase the rate of evaporation, and with more evaporation, there's more water in the air, causing more intense rainfall, which means more flooding. And so you can think of this as um, just like our human bodies. So in a, in a warmer day, in hot temperatures, we drink more water, we are thirstier, and so is the atmosphere due to high temperatures. And so as the atmosphere absorbs uh, more moisture and water vapor, that water vapor has to eventually come back in the form of precipitation over land and oceans. And given that the world has warmed more than one degree Celsius since pre-industrial times, that means we can expect more rain. And so you can think of this as with each one degree Celsius of warming, there is about 7% increase in precipitation in general. So that is one of the primary processes through which global warming is intensifying precipitation. With warming in the future, we do anticipate and project that the intensity of precipitation events will increase. It's not just the warming air. It's also the warming oceans that are strengthening rainfall intensity and flooding. Generally, when you particularly when you have really big precipitation events, the direct source for the meteorological system that's producing it is flow from these ocean areas, Gulf of Mexico or Western Atlantic. And the amount of water vapor is really directly related to the amount or the temperature of the surface of those water bodies. We've seen a steady increase in uh, the temperature of the ocean surface. And that directly is influencing water vapor content. We expect that to continue. There's, there's really no reason to expect that not to continue if we continue to increase the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Dr. Oliver Wing is an expert at estimating rainfall potential. He says the way we build our cities can make the problem even worse. When we get very intense rainfall events, because of how much warmer the Earth is now than it was, for instance, in pre-industrial times or 50, 100 years ago, there's just so much more rain associated with these events. It's falling in built-up areas where it can't drain away, and there's more 
stuff, you know, more people, more buildings, more infrastructure for this excess water to interact with, which is creating so much more disruption than it ever used to. His research has found that the total U.S. population exposed to serious flooding is about three times higher than previous estimates. And heavier rain, coupled with rising oceans, is an increasing threat. Sea level rise is, is, is an undeniable and, and you know, particularly well understood aspect of how that will inflate flood hazard. So irrespective of whether storm surges will get bigger, the baseline on which these storm surges occur is increasing and will continue to increase through through the next centuries. So we will continue to see throughout the century coastal communities flood hazard increasing quite drastically. So what can we do? I think it is very clear now since the science is telling us that the intensity is changing over time, then we definitely need to incorporate those increases in the way we design infrastructure. If we want those infrastructure to be resilient in the future, in a warmer climate, that is extremely important. And you can reduce your risk at home too. Very tangible things like have property level protections to ensure that when the floods or if the floods do come, that their, their property is more resilient to it. Maybe they, they can elevate their homes out of the floodplain if they happen to live there. Maybe they just make sure that the, the expensive things that they own are on the top floor of their property and not the ground floor. Flood insurance is a big one. I'm no shill for the insurance industry, but <laughs> if you want to be able to rebuild your home when a flood happens, then paying a premium so that flood insurance companies can reimburse you for those costs is, is crucial to, to being resilient. Educating yourself on the risks is key, and there are great tools online, including riskfactor.com. I recently visited this website and put in the address for NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the Apollo missions launched. Using the tool, I found that this area's flood risk is a 10 out of 10 or extreme. That means it has a 99% chance of flooding within the next 30 years, with estimated repair costs in the millions. If you live in the U.S., you can try your home address too. It's free. And of course, there are other great flood tools in the description, or you can always visit our website at climateconnections.org. So yes, it is raining harder, and yes, it is flooding more. So it's on us to know our risks and how to protect ourselves, our communities, and our homes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.